this video is going to explain to you how a multi-function valve operates. It won't show you how to use one because that will be shown to you in manufacturer's instructions because they're all slightly different. But this will explain what's going on inside a multifunction valve and why we've got them. All gas appliances are basically very simple. You have a gas supply into a meter, which is purely there to tell the company how much gas you've used. On top of the meter is a pressure regulator, which regulates the pressure coming out of the meter. And then you've got an appliance with some sort of burner inside, which is going to burn the gas. Now, if you just had a box with a burner inside it and no valves, you're going to have totally unrestricted flames or gas pouring out of the burner. So what we do is we put valves inside of the appliances in order to make them work correctly and to work safely. Now in the early days of gas appliances, these valves were put all over the place, inside and outside the appliance, and they were all separate, and you had to check them one by one, and you had to find them, and they were all in different places within different appliances. Very difficult. Not only that, but the manufacturers had to have all the tooling and equipment to make lots of different types of valve. So they came up with the idea that they would put all of these valves inside one multi-function valve. This allowed them just to make one valve and it allowed engineers just to deal with problems inside one valve instead of four or five. The valve was obviously placed inside the appliance, which made the inside of the appliance a lot neater and allowed you to do everything that you needed to do as an engineer in one location. Now, how did they go about fitting all those valves into one multifunction valve? Well, in essence, they took a bit of metal. Actually, it's cut in half, but they took a bit of metal and they just drilled holes and cavities into it. So inside a multifunction valve, there are lots of cavities to hold different types of valves and drill holes running all the way through that allow the gas to go through. So into the cavities, they stuck the different valves that used to be all over the place inside the appliance. And they did it in such a way that the gas, when it was turned on, had to go through the drillings, the small pipework inside, and it made it go through each one of the valves in turn before going off to the burner. Now my drawings obviously are very simplified and they're for the sake of showing how this works not the exact engineering behind it. But here's an engineering drawing 
of a cutout of a multifunction valve. And if you want to sit and look at it, you can see the routes the gas has got to take, the valves it's got to go through in order to go from the inlet to the outlet and out to the burner. But as I've said, this is a simplified video to explain how a multifunction valve works and what's going on in there. So here's my simplified drawing of a multifunction valve. And we'll go through the valve from the time the gas goes into the valve until it leaves to go to the burner. So it's going to go in at the bottom left and it's going to go out to the burner at the top right. So the first thing that you're going to see there sticking out of the valve is an inlet pressure test coil. I'm going to show you some photographs in a minute and you'll see exactly where these are on a couple of different valves. But what you do is you unscrew the little screw in the middle. You don't take it all the way out. You just loosen it. You stick your U gauge on there and it reads the pressure coming into the valve. And you all know you're allowed your one millibar drop. So the first thing it's going to hit is an inlet pressure test point where you as an engineer test the pressure of the gas going into the valve. The next thing it will hit is a solenoid. A solenoid is the simplest valve you can find. It's an on-off switch. When it's supplied with electricity, it opens. If there's no electricity going to it, it closes. So when you plug the appliance in to the electrics and flick the switch, as soon as you flick the switch, the solenoid opens. When you flick the switch off, the solenoid closes. It's an on-off switch which allows gas into the rest of the valve. If the solenoid is open, the gas then goes through to the FSD, the flame safety device, and ignition, which are generally all one unit. And again, you can see here, I've got this poking out of the multifunction valve, and this will be the buttons that you see sticking out. You've either got one big red button or a couple of buttons, one of, one of which will be the ignition and the other one will be the FSD. But these are the buttons that you hold in to light the appliance and then allow the FSD to warm up. They're the FSD and ignition valves. Again, to operate the multifunction valve, you just read the MIs and it will tell you how long to hold the button in for, where to press for the ignition, and how to start the appliance. After it goes through the FSD and the ignition, it then reaches an adjustable regulator. There is a regulator within most of these multifunction valves, if not all of them. Because sometimes you have a range rated appliance, and I've talked about them in a previous video, which means that according to how many radiators or how many rooms there are in the house, you could dial the power of a boiler, for example, up or dial it down. You do that by adjusting the pressure going to the burner. The higher the pressure, the more gas is going to go through 
and the more heat you're going to get out of the appliance. So you've got an adjustable regulator and again manufacturer's instructions will tell you how to adjust it and they'll also tell you what pressure to adjust it to for the circumstances of the house you're fitting the appliance to. Big house will need more pressure than a small house. So how do you check whether the pressure of the regulator, the pressure of the gas going to the burner is correct? Well, you've got a test point just after the regulator, which is the burner pressure test point. It looks identical to the inlet pressure test point, but again, manufacturer's instructions will show you a picture and will show you which one is which. Again, you open the small screw in the middle, you stick your U-gauge on there, with the appliance running this time, you will be able to see what pressure of gas is going into the burner. Again, you look at your manufacturer instructions and it will tell you, oh, it needs a certain pressure to be going in for a certain scenario. So there you go, all of the valves that you would normally have spread around inside an old appliance are simply placed into a small appliance, a small valve in a row so that the gas has to go through them all exactly the same as it used to before going to the burner. Now here's an example of a multifunction valve. There's your ignition on this one. You press that, it'll click, looks like a piezoelectric, like the small lighters. This will be your FSD that you press and hold in and wait for 10 seconds before it allows the valve to stay open. On this particular valve, it uses a liquid file FSD and you can see the file and all the capillary tubing attached to the valve. And the pressure test point on this particular multifunction valve are those two look like bolts sticking out. One, you put your U-gauge on and it's the inlet pressure and the other is the burner pressure. If you look at the side of the valve, it actually tells you the maximum inlet pressure that this valve can take is 65 millibars and the range of pressure outlet, which is the burner pressure, is between 3 and 18 millibars. You look at manufacturer's instructions and it will tell you, okay, if you've got a house with five radiators, then you need to have 14 millibars. If you have a house with three radiators, you only need 10 millibars and you adjust the pressure according to the MIs and the situation of your house. And here, lastly, is a more typical multifunction valve. It's a Honeywell. They've been used in appliances, well, for years and years. Very common. Again, the big grey bit is the FSD and ignition. At the top where you see the electric points, that will be the solenoid, the on-off switch. And then, more importantly to you as an engineer, are your test points, which are there. And again, you just 
unscrew the little screw in the middle. You don't take it all the way out. You just loosen it. You stick the U gauge on it and you carry out a pressure test depending on whether it's inlet or burner pressure that you're looking for. I can't explain to you how to operate all of these valves because there are so many. You'll always have your manufacturer's instructions. You will certainly always have them in your assessment. So look at the MIs. Now you know what all the valves do and where the test points are and what they're for. It should be reasonably easy for you to navigate your way through carrying out any of the tests. You can only carry out two tests on this. And that is, or three tests in fact, you've got the two pressure tests and testing the FSD. Um, you can switch it on and off at the wall and check whether the solenoid is, is operating. But really, all you'll be required to do is to light and check inlet pressure and burner pressure. It's all very simple once you know how it works. As usual, good luck with your assessment. I hope this has helped. If you like this and enjoy it, please leave a like or leave a comment. I'd be very grateful. It helps me. And if there's anything you want, just leave it in the comments and I'll try to get round to doing a video for you in the future. Thank you very much.